Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis, and in this video, I want to take you through a built-in function in Photoshop that can help you get the very best results when blending and masking images together. Okay, so on screen you can see the picture now of Ian where we want to actually use the head. And here now we've got a tab where we've got the body. So before I show you the actual technique I want to cover, let's just have a look at a couple of ways that you might think of blending these two together. What you might think of doing is literally just with the move tool, dragging the picture of Ian's uh, head, holding the shift key down so it drops straight on top, and then simply uh, lowering the opacity using the move tool to try and line them up. And that's going to take quite a bit of time if we just take it back to 100% opacity. And the reason I say that is because if we turn that layer on and off, you can see that they're not perfectly lined up. The chair and the floor certainly aren't, but obviously also we've got the issue where uh, Ian's moved his arms and the head isn't quite in the same position as well. Even though it's just looking away, the head has dropped down just a little bit as well. So lowering the opacity could take a bit of time. Now another way that you could maybe look at blending images together is by using a blend mode. So now that we have our two images stacked here in the uh, layers panel, we can come here to the top layer and change the blend mode from normal to difference. And you'll notice that the image goes quite dark with a few kind of weird colors in there. But basically the idea here now is with the move tool, you can drag the top image around or actually just use the uh, arrow keys on your keyboard there to move it so that it actually lines up and goes into the correct position. Now, if you were using images that did perfectly line up, what you would notice is that when they are all lined up, the image here goes pretty much completely black. So this is a really great way of lining up images. However, in this case, it doesn't work because what we actually have here is the picture of Ian on the top layer has been slightly angled as well. So it's not just a case of moving it around. We would also need to angle it. And that could take quite a bit of time to do that correctly. So what I want to do then is show you a way that we can now blend them together literally with just one click. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the file menu and choose scripts and then load files into stack. And when I do that, we get this dialog box appear. Now we can actually just use uh, files that we've got on our computer. We could even navigate to a folder of images that we have on our computer to use this particular technique. However, I actually have the two images open already in Photoshop. So what I can do is come to the menu option here, which says add open files. And if I click on that, you'll see that the two images that are open now get loaded into this central area just here. Now at the bottom, we've got a couple of checkboxes. The first one says attempt to automatically align the source images. I'm going to put a little tick in there. Now the one underneath it says create a smart object after loading layers. I'm not going to use that option this time. However, keep an eye on the YouTube channel because in a video I'm going to be producing very soon, you will see how I use that and you'll be amazed how incredibly useful that is. But that's not for this particular video. But now that I've got these two files loaded up, We've got the little checkbox here saying attempt to automatically align the source images. Note the word attempt might not work every single time, but now I'm going to click OK. And very, very quickly, you're going to see that you're going to get a result. Now, we've now got three tabs. We've got the two original images here, but now we have a third tab that's been created. Let's just double click on the hand tool to bring it nice and close, where it's actually lined up the images. So now we've still got Ian 1 and Ian 2 lined up in the layers panel here, but look what happens when I turn off the top layer. Can you see how the chair and the floor now are absolutely perfectly lined up? We've got a little bit of movement in Ian, but that's fine. We only want to actually mask in his head. So now that we've got that, in fact, let's, um, in fact, let's just put Ian 2, this layer here that contains just the body, let's put that at the top of the layer stack because all we need to mask out is the head as opposed to the rest of the body. So now then, now that we've got that at the top, so we've got uh, the body at the top, head at the bottom, all I'm going to do is add a layer mask to the top layer, then get a brush with a black foreground color. Let's make sure that brush is nice and soft. And then all I'm going to do is come in and paint with the black brush on Ian's head. Now when we, when we use layer masks, we know that black conceals, white reveals. So what's happening here is it's concealing the original head that Ian had turning away and it's revealing the head underneath. So it's something like that. So you can see that Photoshop has made absolutely, actually that's probably not the best, um, best motion to show, but can you see how quickly Photoshop has allowed us to align these images, blend them together 
So then all I need to do then, quick layer mask, quick use of a black brush, and bang, we can blend it all in. Now the rest of the image, you might notice that there's just a little bit of kind of, um, not maybe halo, but a lighter gray going around the outside there. All I would simply do for that maybe is just add a blank layer, maybe get the clone stamp tool, uh, because we're using a blank layer, make sure that it says all layers here. Change the opacity to around about 50%, and all I'll do is just kind of optional alt click, just some of the area around here, just to kind of blend over a little bit more of that darker area, so that we can blend that nicely in like so. And then the rest of the image, all I'll just come in, get my crop tool, crop down on here like this, a little bit tighter in like so. And then we'll finish off with just by adding a lasso tool, just on that little bit, to get rid of that little octa box that's in the picture there. Edit, fill, choose content aware, and click OK. And it does a fantastic job. Now, in another video on my YouTube channel, which will be uh, linked above, you can see a little card appearing now. I'll show you how you can actually change the perspective of this picture, which is where you can actually change the angle of the floor when you're using the clone stamp tool. But pretty much, that's all I've got for you for this video. Just a really great technique for blending images together so that you get the best results when you're doing your layer masks.